In the last recording on trade, uh, we looked at uh, the comparative advantage example, right? Now we're going to look at the Ricardian model, right? And in this particular recording, we're going to derive the PPF in home country and in the foreign country. We'll take the discussion further in, in the later classes. So initially, we are going to assume that there are two goods which are produced. There are two goods. Right. They can produce wheat cloth. And uh, for now, there is no labor, no capital, nothing. Oh, sorry, there is no land, no capital, but only labor is being used, right? We will drop this assumption later on. No land, no capital as the factor of production. Only labor. Both goods are produced. Are produced using labor alone. We will drop this assumption later, right? We will assume that there is perfect competition, right? We will be assuming that there is perfect competition. Perfect competition and uh, in the labor markets. So because of this, that labor is uh, perfectly mobile. Across sectors. So labor is going to move from the wheat sector to the cloth sector as and when the wages are going to go up or down. So in case of the wheat sector is going to give them more wages, labor is going to move towards that. If cloth sector is going to go, is going to give uh, them more wages, labor is going to move towards that. It is a perfect mobility of labor. But there is no migration. But immobile across sectors. But immobile across sectors. There is no migration at all. So let's look at the home country first. Let us look at the home country first. There is only one input, which is labor. And assume that there are 25 units of labor in home. And also, one unit of labor can produce four units of cloth. Oh, oh, sorry, two units of cloth, let's say. One unit of labor. So when I say one unit of labor can produce uh, two units of cloth, it means that the marginal product of labor in the cloth sector is two. And if I say that one unit of labor can produce four units of wheat, that means the marginal product of labor in the wheat sector is four. Marginal product of labor in the wheat sector is four. Uh, so how is the PPF going to look like, particularly in this case? Hmm. So if we are going to impose the condition that there is only one factor, there are constant returns to scale in technology, and there is perfect competition, we will have a straight line. So if we impose these extra assumptions, if we are going to impose that there is only one factor, which we are saying this, only one factor, then we are also going to assume constant returns to scale and there is perfect competition. Right. Then the kind of the production possibility frontier which will be generated, it will be like this. Somewhat like this. I'll draw this, but I'm just giving you an idea. If you will have more than one factor, I mean, you can even have 
the production possibility frontier like this. But right now, we are imposing these conditions. So what we are saying is this. So you have wheat, quantity of wheat being produced here. Quantity of cloth being produced here. And you have something like this. So how do we say this? That if uh, all workers, if all workers are going to be employed in the wheat sector, then what is the total amount of wheat which can be produced? One worker is producing four units of wheat. And there are 25 such workers. So how many workers will be used to produce wheat? I mean, how much of wheat can be produced? 100. If all workers are being used in the cloth production, then each worker is producing two units of cloth. There are 25 workers. So the total cloth which could be produced is 50. The total cloth which could be produced is 50. So this is going to be the slope of, this is going to be the production possibility frontier. And let me also write it here like this. This is MPLC into L. This is what 50 is. This is MPLW into L, right? L or L bar or whatever you want to say. This is the total amount of labor which is there in the economy. And the slope of PPF is, is going to be what? Intercept on the y-axis upon intercept on the x-axis. Of PPF is going to be what? 50 upon 100. That is going to be equal to half. That is going to be equal to half. So if you look at the slope of PPF, this is, this is actually what? Your and of course, guys, this is there is a minus sign out here. Uh, the reason being you have you know that in your mind this is a downward sloping curve. So, but when we talk in general, we just say in the absolute values. So this is this was what MPLC into L bar, right? These intercepts MPL W into L bar. So what you get is this minus of MPLC upon MPLW. Mm -hmm. So what is this signifying? This is signifies the amount of cloth which you have to give up in order to get one more unit of wheat. So the amount of cloth that must be given up. get one more unit of wheat. So what do you mean by this? This is nothing but the opportunity cost of wheat. Right? This is nothing but the opportunity cost of wheat. Similarly, we can also write about the uh, PPF for the foreign country. So let us also talk about the foreign country very quickly. So we're going to assume that the foreign country is a little different from the home country. And how we are going to assume this, that uh, foreign countries using the different technology. And because of using the different technology, its marginal product for labor in the cloth and the wheat sector are going to be different. That's an idea. Uh, that's an idea. So we'll be assuming different technology. Different technology. So let us assume that the labor 
in uh, the foreign country and that too in the cloth sector can produce one unit of cloth. Labor in the foreign country in the wheat sector can produce only one unit of cloth, right? And let us assume that uh, there are 100 workers which are there in the foreign, foreign country. Let us assume that there are 100 workers in the foreign country. You, you understand this? That both, uh, there is a different technology in the foreign sector. And because of this, the marginal product of labor is different in the cloth sector and, the, and in the uh, wheat sector as compared to the home countries. And the total amount of labor is also different out here. Fair enough. So we just want to draw this. So you have the quantity of wheat, quantity of cloth, right? So if all labor in the foreign sector is used in the cloth sector, so they can produce how much? One labor can produce one unit of cloth. And if all 100 labor are being used here, so they can produce 100 units of cloth. This is nothing but MPL star C into L bar. While if all labor is being used in the wheat sector, then one unit of labor can produce one unit of wheat. There are 100 labors there, 100 units of wheat. MPL star W equals to this, right? And what is the slope of the PPF in the foreign country? It is going to be minus one. Slope of PPF in the home country is minus half. Slope of PPF in the foreign country will be equal to minus one. That is in absolute value half and one. This will have implication when we will try to find out the equilibrium price. Uh, but for this recording, I'm going to stop here and we will take the discussion further when we will introduce the indifference curves on the home country and the foreign country. We'll find out the otaki equilibrium and then we will try to find out the pattern of trade, right? Thank you.